Hi, my wonderful friends. Wow, it's September already. Wow, can you believe it? We're almost getting to the end of the year. Wow. Why did January and February and March and the likes just passed us by just like that? It's so amazing. I want to believe some of you are getting ready to prepare for school as you're done with your holidays. Some of you will be resuming tomorrow. I'm sure some will also be resuming next week. So before we go ahead, let's just say a little prayer, just a short word of prayer. In Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for your children. We thank you for lavishing your grace and favor upon our lives. Thank you, O Lord, Father, for the holidays in which we spent, the way we all spent, O Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your protection and your provision. Be the exalted, be the glorified in Jesus' name. Father, we've come again to learn at your feet. Father, we say more of you and less of us in Jesus' name. At the end of the day, we shall have the fullest cause to glorify your holy name in the mighty name of Jesus. Hope you all, you all are wonderful. Hope you enjoyed the past months, which was August. Hope you, hope you used the holidays very well. Hope you didn't lavish it anyhow. Okay, so before we get our dancing shoes ready and you know get into the presence of God and with praise and thanksgiving, we're going to say, you know, um, just a little pep talk. So today we're talking about pep pressure. Now, what do you understand by pep pressure? I'm sure some things are going through your mind. You'll be like, yes, okay, um, intimidation, wanting to be like your fellow friends, your fellow circle of friends. Yes, I'm sure you've been pressurized, you've been intimidated, you've been persuaded, you know, to conform to some group of friends. Maybe you feel, okay, you want to be like this particular set of people. You want to be like them, maybe they wear good shoes, and maybe they, um, they drop um, them off at school with very good cars. And your mom drops you off with Okada, okay, kind of pep. And you want to be like, ah, I want to be like this, you know, you've been intimidated, you've been persuaded. That's what they call pep pressure. And don't be scared, don't be, um, you know, don't be marveled. Because even mommy and daddy can also come under the influence of pep pressure. You're surprised, right? Yes, they can. Because, they want, because you, you, they want to be like others. They want to imitate the acts of their fellow friends, their colleagues. You know, that is pep pressure. You know, and fine. I know pep pressure has been seen to be on the negative side, but we also have the positive ends to pep pressure. So next week we'll discuss in more details the negative and the positive sides of pep pressure. Okay, I'm sure you've learned 18 or two. Now let's head into the dance floor. Let's praise God. Let's you know wear our dancing shoes. Let's you know shake our bodies, and until we see us after this timeout. Thank you. Are you ready to praise God this morning? Are you ready to give Him praise today? Come on, I can't hear you. Are you ready to praise Him? Come on, let's praise Him together. We will sing of His mercy. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing. I will sing. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. Do you know it? I need to be sure. Do you know this? Can we sing it together? Are you sure we can sing it together? Let's go. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing. I will sing. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. Let me hear you say. Are you sure you know it? Do you need help? Come on, yeah. Yeah. Yes, you're sure now. Come on. Let's do it again one more time. I will sing. Yeah. That's good. I love your voice. Yeah, I love the way you sound. And I'm sure God loves the way you sound too. Come on. Let's say it one more time again. I will see. Yes. Forever I will sing of the mercies 
Welcome back, friends. How was the praise and worship? I want to believe that you had a very good time in the presence of the Lord. And um, again, happy new month to all of us, you know. And um, for us on this part of the globe, I know that um, we've been on holidays and um, we are getting ready to resume. I hope the holiday was used for something very, very productive. And I hope that you had enough time to rest before going back to school. So welcome back again, and we go ahead with our message for today. Now, Uncle had talked to us about peer pressure, and we've been talking about the Word of God, the Word of God since the beginning of last month. And I do believe that you have been studying the Word of God better. I want to believe that. Not the kind of microwaves, microwave um, studying, you know, not the kind of uh, one second studying just to mark the register to say that you have um, you, you studied the Bible. No, I really do believe that you've been studying the word of God well. The more you study, the more you develop yourself spiritually. So before we go into the message, can we just say a word of prayer? Father, Lord, we thank you for today and for this grace that you have given to us. Lord, the Bible says the entrance of your word gives light. We we'll pray, Lord, that you will shine your light upon our hearts as we share your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so as I was saying, we've been talking about the word of God. What have you been learning about the word of God? What are you familiar with? If you close your eyes now, how many passages of the Bible can you even talk about? What do you know about God's word? You hit three times daily in the morning, in the afternoon and in the night. How many times do you feed on God's word? Remember, if you don't build your spiritual life, if you don't build your spiritual muscles, you can become a quasi or Christian. And I believe that is not what you want to be. Okay, so today our topic is God's word on prayer. What does the Bible say about prayer? And by the way, what is prayer? What do you know about prayer? Please make sure you have your notebook, your Bible, and your pen beside you so that you can take some notes. Okay, now, prayer is all about communicating with God. You know, the way you communicate with your daddy, with your mommy, with your friends, prayer is about communicating with God. That is, talking to God. And the thing is this, yes, we know God as God, but we need to get to that point where we would also know God as our Father. He is not only our God, He is our Father. And we need to build this relationship, this father-son, father-daughter relationship. So just imagine God being like daddy or mommy, you know. You talk to him, you wake up, you say, hello, daddy, good morning, good morning, daddy, good morning, mommy, you know. Just talk to him. You are in need of something, talk to him. You just want to appreciate him and say, oh, thank you, daddy, you know. You need to begin to see God, not only as God, but even as your father and as your friend. So now that is about prayer, talking to God. And the more you spend time talking to God, the more you know him, the more you, the, the closer you get to him. Now let us read what the Bible says about prayer. Let's go to James 5, 13 to 17. James 5, 13 to 17. I read, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will heal the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, it will be forgiven. Verse 16, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, 
fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Verse 17, Elijah was a man with a nature like hers, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the heart produced its fruit. Now, I will also go to the book of 1 Peter 3.12. 1 Peter 3.12. I read, For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Now, there is one word that is common in the two verses that I have read. That is the word righteous. The Bible says, the effective, fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. What does it mean for a prayer to be effective? That means that your prayer is yielding results. To be effective means to yield results. What do you mean about fervent? That is something about being passionate, something that is in, in, intense. You are praying, your prayer, you are praying with fervency. You are praying with passion. You know, Bible says this prayer avails much. And the Bible talks about being righteous, meaning that if I want to come to God, if I want to pray, I have to have a right standing with God. And that is why the Bible says, if you stand praying and you remember that you have done something bad, you need to go and rectify it and come back to God. You can't come to the presence of God with sin or with something bad because God sees all that we do. So we need to try as much as possible to maintain a right standing with God, to do what is right at all times. And if we sin, we make mistake, we can always go to God the Father to ask for forgiveness. He is our Father. Jesus Christ is our heart for it. He would forgive us if we make mistake. So the Bible says, pray for one another. You can pray for yourself. You can pray for one another. You can pray for your country. You can pray for so many things. It is not only about ourselves that we should pray about. Now we are going to be going to some of the things that we need to know about prayer. When we want to pray, we need to believe that we are coming to a God who answers prayers. Don't have that doubt. Don't come to the presence of God with doubts in our hearts. That is one. Hebrews 11.6 says, For without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that will come to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Meaning that when you are approaching God to pray, you must believe, you must have faith that he will hear you. That is one. Now, another thing is the Psalm 100 verse 4 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his court with praise. Meaning that when we are approaching the presence of God, we should come with thanksgiving. Don't just rush in and say, Oh, thank you, um, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I pray my exam, let me pass. No, we must come to the presence of God with thanksgiving. Don't be in a hurry. That is one. Then you must come. You must come with faith in your heart. You must believe that it will hear you. And sometimes we'll pray. We say, God, please help me. And we will still go about saying the negative things. Our faith and what we are thinking needs to align. We must believe in the word of God. Another thing, we must pray in the name of Jesus. Let's look at John chapter 14, verses 13 to 14. And it says, And whatever you ask, in my name, that I will do, that the name of the Father may be glorified, or that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. When we are praying, let us pray in the name of Jesus. That is what the Bible says. If you ask anything in my name, that I will do. Remember, come into the presence of God with thanksgiving. Come into his presence with faith in your heart. Another thing I will talk about, we need to pray according to his will. We can't do, be doing prayers to satisfy our own personal or our own selfish desire. The book of 1 John 5, 14. And it says, now, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Now, you are probably between age 10 and 12, and you are praying for a car. 
Is God going to answer that prayer? You don't need it now. Another thing, we may be praying, oh Lord, please provide for me. I need this money. What do you need the money for? Maybe you need the money to do some things to oppress. Or maybe you want to be like your friends. You want to dress like they dress. You want to, oh, you see that, oh, these people, the way they look in school, the things they wear. You also want to be like them. You want to belong. And you are praying for God to provide for you. And the intention is not actually because you really need that thing, but because you want to be among. You know, remember Uncle talked about prayer pressure. You want to be among. You want to feel among. That kind of a prayer may not be answered. Our prayer should be according to the will of God. And another thing, even on a more serious note, maybe you want to pray. You are praying for God that, God, I must be a doctor. I must be a doctor. Maybe it is not God's will for you to be a doctor. And as events unfold, you see that you are not going towards that direction, you know. Our prayer must be in line with God's will because God checks our motive. We must pray according to his will if we want our prayers to be answered. Then another thing, we must forgive. If we do not forgive others, the Bible says, neither will our Heavenly Father forgive us. We must forgive. We must forgive. Who is that person that you are holding grudges with? Who is that person that offended you and you are yet to let go? You are are yet to release from your heart. You need to forgive. Not because of the person, but because of you. Not because of the person, but just so that Nothing will stand in the way of your own blessings. So remember, going over what we have talked about, you must come to the presence of God with thanksgiving. You must come with faith. You must pray according to the will of God. And apart from that, you must pray in the name of Jesus. And another thing, don't do high service. For others to know that, oh, this person knows how to pray. You are going, standing in public. If you read Matthew 6, when you, maybe after the service, you read Matthew 6. Praying, you know, just to make people to know that, oh, this person prays very well. This person is a spirit person, you know. All of those prayers, they are just high services. We don't have to make everybody, we don't have to let everybody know that we are prayer champions or warriors or whatsoever. We must pray. And another thing I would like to point out, praying is not about all the gymnastics, you know, rolling on the floor, you know, shouting, shaking your head. That is not prayer. You may shake your head all you like. You may do whatever. You may roll on the floor. If your prayers will not be answered, if you are not praying in line with God's will, if you are having unforgiveness in your heart, that prayers will not be answered. So let us learn to pray. And praying is not even tied to maybe your bedroom, a corner or somewhere. No, you can pray anywhere. And you can pray in whatever posture. When you are in bed, you can pray. When you are in the restroom, you can pray. When you are walking on the road, you can pray. Let us learn to pray, communicate with God every now and then. When we do this every now and then, we'll get closer to God. We will get to know him more. And in the place of prayer, we will receive directions. We will receive instructions. We will receive directions. It will open our eyes to the things that we need. God is our father and he is a good, good father. And we must learn to trust him. Now, if you are going to have this relationship, you will need to give your life to Jesus. It is very important that we build this relationship. Can we pray? If you are here, you have not given your life to Christ. You don't have that relationship with the Father. Can you close your eyes so that you can pray? Heavenly Father, I thank you for the grace and the privilege you have given unto us. Sending your son to die for our sin. I give my life to Christ today. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. Forgive all my sins and iniquities. Come into my life and help me to live a new life in you from this time forth in the name of Jesus. Amen. Congratulations. And it doesn't end here. Let us get to know God, spend more time with him so that we can know him more. Now, our memory verse is in the book of Isaiah 55, 11. Isaiah 55, 11. Can we read together? One, two, go. Isaiah 55, 11. It is the same with my word. I send it out and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to and it will prosper everywhere I send it. God's word is faithful and true. God's word, the Bible says his words and promises are yea and amen. This week, 
Let us do it differently. Let us spend more time praying to God. Not microwave prayer just to mark the register that you are afraid. No. Let us learn to build this relationship with God by talking to him and, you know, worshiping him, praising him, spending time in his presence more and more. God will help us as we go in Jesus' name. Thank you very much for, the, for being part of this service. Let us have a beautiful week ahead. Thank you and bye. The Word of God is full of power, never changing, never failing. The Word of God is sure and true, a guiding light through the darkness. It does what it says, it's spirit and life, it endures forever. Changing, never failing. The word of God is sure and true, a guiding light through the darkness. It does what it says, it's spirit alive, it endures forever. We can count on it as a sure foundation. There is power, power. Does what he says, it's spirit and life, it endures forever. We can count on it as a sure foundation. There is power, power, power in the word of God. There is healing. Foundation. We can count on it as a sure foundation.